And lastly, we have we are going to do a shading or modeling on a sphere. So first we have to draw ourselves a circle. So I'm going to use this circle template. You can, if you're at home, you can draw freehanded or you can find, you know, the cap off of something, the lid off of something to draw a circle on. Um, I'm not too concerned about it. Try to get a, the nice, uh, perfect circle as you can, even if you have to freehand it. So again, my light source is going to come here from the upper right. So this is going to be, the upper right is going to be my light side. The lower left is going to be my shadow side. So I'm going to start my shading. As you see with the moon uh, at night is usually lit partially. You get a crescent shape. So I'm going to start my shading with a very rough kind of crescent shape. And just like before, I'm going to fill in that whole area with a middle value gray. Not too dark, not too light. We can adjust it later on. And I want to blur the leading edge of it, the edge towards the light source. I want to blur that. I want to make that kind of irregular. You don't want to go like that and have it be a solid line. You want a broken edge there so it looks like it's fading out. The brighter the light source, the more defined that edge is, the more diffused the lighting, say you're outside something outside on a cloudy day, the more that gradient would slowly fade out. But when you have a bright light source, and we're kind of creating the illusion of a bright light source, because that's the way your still lifes are lit, we are going to have a fairly distinct edge, but it still is going to be blurred. Okay, so we have our base shadow area tone. Now again, we're going to come in just back from the Terminator. And I'm going to start to work that narrow band again. And sometimes you can go this direction. Sometimes you can go back and forth this direction. Just don't work any one of them too much. You don't want to create a stripe. It's more of a blurry band. And shading takes patience. You just have to relax and not be in a hurry. And just slowly build it up. So we make that a little bit darker, then we can start to fade it out. And again, so we have our main light source coming here. And then say there was like, you know, this is sitting on a tabletop. Light bounces off the surface, comes in, bounces off the surface and kind of backlights that. Now on our cylinder, there might be other objects next to this that the light would bounce off of and backlight that. So when you look at actual objects, you won't always see this. It all depends on the type of lighting. But as artists, it's good to know how to do it. And when you're creating a still life, it adds a dramatic effect um, that is more appealing, more visually appealing than just making it dark all the way to the edge. And then we just keep working that like we did with our cylinder, adjusting it, adjusting our dark band. making sure it's blurred and you know slide your hand get your hand away from the point don't put your hand on top don't have your hand up here at the point because you're gonna press too hard you've got to move your hand away from the point more towards the eraser end and build it up slowly And then you just kind of keep working that again multi-directionally. I keep changing my direction of my strokes because it really helps to blend it in. No finger shading. Okay, we can work this halftone area perhaps a little bit more, add a little bit more light. It all depends on the light source. Get that to fade. Blur that as needed, adjust it. Perhaps darken my band here a little bit more, blend it in. Okay. And there you have it. Okay. We've got our gradient. 
we applied our gradient to our cylinder and our sphere to create the illusion of three-dimensional form.